Hi and welcome. I'm Miss Barbara with the Greensboro Public Library and I want to do a cooking segment with you today on how to soup up your robin. <laughs> robin is such a tasty treat for me and many other people. It's kind of got a beloved spot in culture but sometimes I want it to be less of a quick snack with just the packet of noodles and seasonings and more of a meal. So let's talk about what we need to make our ramen tasty. For extra tasty ramen, we need a few things. First, we need to pick a style of ramen. You've got lots of options. There's cup noodles and marichan at most grocery stores. But here in Greensboro, we're fortunate enough to have some great Asian markets and you can find dozens of flavors and styles of ramen from very mild Japanese flavors like the Tonkatsu ramen all the way to incredibly spicy uh, ramen and then my personal favorite which is something in between that is spicy Korean ramen with a cheese packet. There's also lots of wonderful options for other noodles, rice cakes, uh, even porridge and udon. You can just experiment and find a flavor packet that you like. The other thing we need are toppings. Ramen is such a clean out of your refrigerator dish. You can save a little bit of your vegetables, a little bit of your meat, I like to put in eggs for a cheap protein if you don't eat uh, meat or are trying to stay away from certain kinds of meat or would like a lighter ramen. You can do tofu. There's some really great uh, varieties of tofu such as the silken one that they make for miso soup or even flavored ones like this tofu that's extra firm and has been marinated in five spice powder. You can also put in things like miso paste, ponzu which is soy with uh, lemon. You can use sesame oil or regular soy as well. You can use a variety of vegetables. I've got some peppers, eggplants, spinach. Is very easy to put in because it wilts down almost as fast as it touches the hot broth or you can saute it if you're cooking other vegetables. Um, snow peas. I also have some chorizo. One of my other favorite things are the uh, Chinese sausages. They're already hard cured and kind of sweet which makes them nice in the very spicy Korean ramen. And of course eggs are my favorite protein. I also have some mushrooms. So just use a variety of what you have and what you like to eat. That's kind of the beauty of ramen. It's totally a comfort meal. So once you've chosen your ramen, just go ahead and make it according to the package instructions. For most um, dry ramens like this, you're going to put it in a pot and cover it with two or three inches of water and just boil it about three minutes to five minutes depending on how soft you'd like it. When you've done that, you put in your seasoning packets. You can stir it in to a, your noodles while they boil. If you're going to do a soup, if you're going to do a dry ramen, then I usually wait to put my seasoning packet uh, in until I've drained the noodles. If you have a powdered seasoning packet, put it in with the water. So the first thing that I'm going to cook in my pan for my ramen is the bulgogi meat. And I set it in one side of my pan and let it cook thoroughly. While that's going, 
I'm going to put mushrooms in another part of my pan and the spinach. nice thing about having little bits of several different flavors is that they won't take long to cook. With the bulgogi and if you have chorizo that's loose and not cured you'll also cook it at this stage um, the silken tofu can go in just the way that it is, same for the preserved tofu, but the one that's marinated can either go in the way that it is, or you can pan fry it a little bit to heat it up and uh, to give it a better taste and texture. Tilt that just a little bit. So you can see everything that's cooking in the pan, all nice and delicious. Always make sure that you're eating things at safe handling temperatures. Um, chicken and pork should definitely be cooked all the way through. Um, the beef, you can leave a little rare and let your broth cook, but I still like to cook mine most of the way through, if not all the way through. bowl of ramen so far. It's hard for me to tilt it a lot because of the broth, but we've got our gorgeous wide noodles and, well they're not super wide, they're curly and wide, and our spicy broth. And I'm going to start layering my ingredients, but first you can either sprinkle your cheese packet on the top or now, and I like doing it now so that I can mix it in. I almost forgot our cheese packet. into the bowl and just because I like the way that it looks I'm going to kind of put them around the parameter so that they're in their own little quadrant but you can just lay them on the top or eat it however you like plating is part of the fun of food making it look nice you eat with your eyes and all of that saying so come up with interesting ways to make your ramen look Part of jazzing it up.
going to swap this pan for the one that I work super often. All of this over so my hot pan doesn't touch any of our warming packets. I'm going to heat our broth back up a little bit. I'm going to crack an egg into it. With eggs, it's better to crack them into a separate bowl. And that way, if you get a bad egg or one that has a spot, um, you can go ahead and discard it and you haven't ruined the rest of your dish. Here we go. Also, if you get a shell in your egg, now it's a great time to be able to take it out. Which is exactly what I just did. Okay. So our broth doesn't have to be super boiling. This is a really gentle technique to kind of make a poached egg. So I'm just going to put it into my broth. broth heat up around it and cook the whites. The yolk is kind of floating on the top of it and I'm just going to keep an eye on it. When the white starts looking done, I'm going to tilt the pan and use my spoon to move the broth around a little bit to finish completely cooking the whites. And then I'm going to put it in the middle of my ramen like the star it is and we're going to eat some very tasty ramen. over so that it can cook in a little bit more of the warm broth. And some of my white has come away from my egg. That's perfectly fine. And this is done enough for me. The white is completely cooked. The yellow is cooked a little bit, but it's still liquidy. And I'm going to pour the whole thing over my rum. And there you have it, the amazing and delicious ramen that we just made together. I hope that you try different combinations and flavors. I hope that you throw in a handful of whatever you like to eat into your next batch of ramen. And enjoy.